It's striped bass and halibut season in the San Francisco Bay, and piers are full of people casting for a catch. I'm fishing for sea bass. Usually I fish out here for halibut, striped bass. Yeah, there's halibut out here. I'll definitely eat halibut. What these anglers at the Berkeley Pier may not know is that their tasty meal might not be as healthy as they think. Some of the fish they're hauling in are loaded with a hefty dose of mercury. Larger fish, those apex predators such as the swordfish, shark, ahi, albacore, sea bass, large halibut, all these large fish live a long time and eat other fish. So mercury will accumulate in the aquatic system. This naturally occurring metal is toxic when it enters the food chain and can cause permanent damage to the central nervous system. It's neurotoxic to developing brains. So pregnant nursing mothers, small children, babies should not consume mercury on a regular basis or at all. Any exposure to mercury is not good, but when you've got concentrations of mercury at the level that they are in San Francisco Bay, it's problematic for both the wildlife that eats the fish out of the bay and also for the people who are consuming those fish. Sejal Choksi is with San Francisco Baykeeper, an environmental group that advocates for aggressive mercury cleanup in the bay. We're going to do a little patrol today down on the waterfront. The mercury is prevalent. It's throughout the whole system, um, but you can't see it. Because of its potency and highly changeable nature, mercury poses unique challenges to monitoring and cleanup efforts. Mercury is really poisonous at low concentrations, and so to measure it accurately, you have to make sure that you don't contaminate the sample. Russ Flagel and his team of scientists from the University of California, Santa Cruz, are measuring the pervasiveness of mercury throughout the bay. Mercury is the only element that exists as a liquid at room temperature but it also exists in a gaseous form. Mercury is found primarily in a red rock known as cinnabar. When it settles in waterways, bacteria transform it into a form known as methylmercury. That's the kind that Flegel is most concerned about. Methylmercury is highly toxic and is easily absorbed by tiny aquatic organisms. Methylmercury is picked up in plants and is picked up in the organisms that eat the plants. And as you move up the food chain to bigger and bigger organisms, you get more and more mercury. In wildlife, mercury in high concentrations can cause developmental problems, just as it does in humans. You can have issues where eggs don't hatch, fetuses don't develop properly, you have birth defects. If you've got mercury impairing wildlife and their immune systems, then they're more susceptible to infectious diseases. They can have cancerous growths. It's pretty much the same as in the human population. Few would suspect that this poisonous element is also at the root of California's history and prosperity. In the 19th century, mercury was used extensively in the gold rush, and the best place to find mercury was in the cinnabar-rich hills just south of San Jose, in a town called New Almaden. What is unique of this mine was there was no other working mercury mine anywhere in North America. To extract mercury, crushed ore was heated in furnaces and transformed into a vapor. As the gas cooled and condensed, it turned into a liquid form known as quicksilver. Mercury is naturally attracted to gold, and Sierra miners put it to work separating the precious metal from crushed rock. By the early 1900s, miners had switched to cyanide to extract gold, but mercury still had many uses in industry, medicine, dentistry, and common household products. Most mining operations are short-lived, the ore runs out, but this was mined from 1845 until 1976. All that mining left behind a legacy in the form of mercury waste. Rocky deposits from the old furnaces are leaching mercury into the creeks and rivers that are part of the South Bay's Guadalupe River watershed. Mercury-tainted sediment can also be found throughout the Sierra Nevada, San Pablo Bay, and the Delta. Their contaminated waters all drain into San Francisco Bay. The problem with mercury is it's not just a historic pollutant. 
it is the major inorganic environmental pollutant being put into the environment now. Mercury travels through the air, too. It drifts in emissions from local oil refineries and cement kilns, and large quantities also come from coal-burning power plants in China. Mercury is also in wastewater and in stormwater runoff. Bruce Wolf is with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. It's the state agency that oversees water pollution in the Bay Area. We're concerned about mercury down into the part per billion range. A drop of water in a backyard swimming pool is about a part per billion. And so even a thermometer or what's in a fluorescent bulb is a significant amount. Roughly 2,000 pounds of mercury enter bay waters every year from all these different sources. The bay is slowly cleaning itself, washing 3,100 pounds a year out to sea. But because so much has built up over time, it needs a helping hand. To speed up the process, in 2008, the regional board launched the largest effort ever to clean up toxic pollution in the bay. So far, the plan has reduced wastewater runoff, and erosion control is stemming the flow of old mine waste into the bay. But not all of the board's efforts to control inflows have been successful, and only time can wash the toxic sediment from the bay's mud. In the meantime, mercury levels in fish and wildlife remain as high as ever. At a minimum, three generations will be impacted by the potent and long-lasting poison still lingering in the bay mud. It may take more than 100 years for the bay to recover, but environmental groups say that's too long to wait for cleaner waters. The San Francisco Bay should be a resource for the community. It's not a place that should be allowed to be contaminated and polluted. So whatever we can do to clean up the contamination in the Bay as fast as possible is what we should be doing.